Good night, good evening everyone. Um, we don't have quite the full house yet, but hopefully folks will be joining us. Um, what we wanted to do tonight is kind of walk through some information about the APS kind of scoreboard effort in general, um, where we are with it, what's happened, and I'll give you guys a little bit of background, and then I'll kind of give you an update on where we are, and I will kind of let you know what the next few steps would be. And hopefully that will be, we're, re we're recording this tonight as well, so this will be available for folks to look at if they couldn't make the 7 o'clock. So, um, and in the chat for YouTube, um, uh, our handy cameraman Drew in the background here will be able to capture your questions, throw them over my way, and hopefully we can answer some of those tonight. If not, don't worry, I've got a survey that we've got out on the website um, to capture people's comments and, and feedback as well. So. This is really an info session. It's designed to give you guys some info on where we are, what we're doing, and also then to solicit some feedback from the community uh, so we know how to shape this kind of going forward. So background, we started this effort, many of you may remember, in 2020, uh, right into the February, January timeframe of 2020, and we obviously got sideways with COVID um, thereafter. So we managed to do a quick fundraiser last for about two months, and then that was the end of that. Um, so for the last two years, this effort's been largely dormant. Um, we haven't really been able to do much. Uh, obviously, those of you who are at Yorktown uh, have seen the state of our scoreboard this fall, and we all know that it needs some help. Um, obviously, the Twitterverse knows uh, there's plenty of information going around there. So um, in that period of time, we've now kind of recircled the wagons to talk about this. Um, and I'll give you an update on that, but we now are not doing this just from a York Yorktown point of view. Uh, we're doing this across APS. So we've had conversations with our WNL and Wakefield friends. Um, they're on board with wanting to pursue this as an avenue, not only for us, but for their schools as well. Um, and so we want to tackle this kind of as an APS-wide approach, um, which is what I'll walk you guys through here briefly. Um, and then, you know, once I get through kind of some presentation material, uh, then we'll go through and, and answer questions the best we can. All right, fire it up, Drew. So as we all are aware, um, scoreboards at all three high schools are outdated. Um, ours is in the, the most urgent need, as most are aware, and needs kind of immediate replacement. Wakefield and WNL are not far behind, um, you know, in terms of when theirs are going to need replacement. Um, the capital budgets that are put forth by the school system are available to replace the boards. So there's been some concern and some question about whether or not the boards were sufficient to be able to be or whether APS had planned to replace the boards. The answer to that question is they have, but those capital budgets that are in place today are only really sufficient to replace the existing boards as they stand. So they're not to, they're not going to give us anything other than what kind of we already have, just a, a copy paste version of that, if you will. Um, and then what that results in for us is that we've obviously seen better and, and more capable boards that are in the marketplace. Um, if you've seen any of the videos and stuff we had from a couple of years ago, and they're, they're, I've reposted them back out on the YHS Boosters website, um, the digital media boards are far more capable and ones that give us an opportunity to do more than just keep score even, right? Um, so that's something we saw as an opportunity uh, to be able to take advantage of, given that we need to do the replacement anyway. So that's kind of why we kind of went down this road. So a little bit about the digital media boards. Um, they're, they're essentially supersized LED screens. Um, they can show pretty much everything. If you've seen anything kind of at a collegiate level, um, even, at, even at the pro level, you've seen exactly what we're talking about, right? So the R board at the high school level may not be as large as some of those, but it's still going to be a, a full-size digital media board with all of those capabilities, which means that we can show live video, images, media, um, everything you can think of and inclusive of advertisements and other things that we would be uh, wanting to do. So we can show student images and profiles, right? So as kids are able to, you know, whether they're entering the game, whether they're, they've just scored a goal, we can flash up an image of those students, right? And show kind of their, you know, their, their mug shot. Um, and then we can do live video feeds uh, that can include from on the field. Uh, it can include from up in the press box. It could be for things like senior night, um, it could be for you know, graduations, obviously during COVID, this would have been a handy thing to have during graduations. 
So any of those kinds of things we can do with the video, with the video boards. Uh, it opens up an opportunity not only for us to kind of show all that, but it gives an opportunity for our students uh, who are interested in doing media production uh, to be able to learn how to do that and control that stuff um, themselves. Um, obviously we can include advertising, which will be a key component of this as I'll walk through later when I get to the finances part of this. Uh, we are going to need to be able to do advertising to ultimately finance these boards. So that's a point where we're going to have to work through. It's not something that has been customary um, with some of the you know, Arlington fields, um, but it is it's something that we have done and all the schools do in varying degrees with things like programs um, and other uh, advertising support from our, our businesses in the community. The activities and the ADs uh, at all of the three schools are supportive of pursuing the video board replacements, so they think those are good ideas. Um, and they're, they're ready to do that for the rectangular fields. Uh, we have not yet taken a, an approach that covers the baseball diamonds and the uh, inside the basketball uh, facilities. Uh, those are options uh, in the sense that they are available from the manufacturer. Um, and we can look at that, that as potentially a phase two uh, slash phase three uh, approach to this. So right now we're kind of tackling the rectangular fields. That's the most urgent need, certainly in Yorktown. Um, and then we can kind of begin to tackle what we want to upgrade outside of that. So how much the million dollar question? They aren't cheap, right? The boards are 100 to $120,000 uh, all in, uh, installed and in all the equipment that we're going to need. That does get us a lot of capabilities. I mentioned it also gets us some audio upgrades, which we, we also need in Greenbrier. Um, and would give us, you know, as I said, like an operational capability. So it requires new pilings, it requires power, it requires ethernet connections, which we don't use today, to all be laid and run at the field. Um, so it's definitely a, a full on new install. So immediate funding sources would kind of be, the APS budget has about $20,000 set aside to be able to replace the current board, um, which they would then be able to apply towards uh, a new board. Uh, from the parents, we've kind of set ourselves a target of around 30000 bucks to try to raise. Um, what that fundraising composition looks like is kind of out there. I'm, I'm looking for some folks to help volunteer around how we would go about doing that the best. Um, from regular donations to sponsorships to, you know, advertising support. And then the last bit, we would have to, we would want to be able to finance that portion remaining somewhere between 50 to 70. Uh, just as a near-term um, mechanism to be able to get the board ordered and installed as rapidly as possible. Um, obviously, the, the mechanism to, to fund that over time would be done through some of the advertising structures that we'll talk about. Um, the board, right now, our best case scenario for being able to get a board installed at Yorktown, uh, as it relates to the manufacturer, is next spring. Uh, that would be our best case scenario. So. Um, if we wrote them a check, you know, tomorrow kind of a thing, we still wouldn't be able to get it by the fall. Uh, their production schedule and their implementation schedule is already full up through the summer. So we are, we're not going to be able to kind of get, make, make that one happen as much as we would probably love to do that. Um, so unfortunately we're still targeting for, you know, hopefully next spring, uh, to be able to get that board up and moving. Um, so now long-term kind of revenue structures, um, the ability to have both the static image and the video advertisements offers us a pretty big range of possibility for revenue. Um, there's programs that exist at other high schools that we've been able to see in terms of how they raise their funds and what their programs look like. Um, we believe that by attacking this approach with APS on all three schools, that opens up our advertising avenues quite a bit because we can start to advertise not just within the Yorktown community but across all three schools as an APS community and be able to approach some of our sponsors that are in the kind of Arlington community space. Obviously, Amazon's coming to town, and we have other big companies that are here, including Boeing and, and of course, all of our government contracting and friends. So we think that we could put together some packages that would allow us to do some premium sponsorship that expands all three schools and ultimately would allow us to fund and finance these boards in the near term. Um, ultimately, any of that advertising revenue that's persistent once we've paid for these boards becomes money that the Booster Club can then use to, to spend on our student athletes. So we have a potential here for not only just a revenue stream to help finance the board, 
but a persistent revenue stream that allows us to potentially have uh, a stronger booster organization and ultimately support the students, the athletes a little bit longer and, and with more, more capability. So I think there's a couple things there. Uh, preliminary estimates basically suggest that we would be able to pay these boards off in approximately four years. I'll walk you through some of the Gazenta math here in a second. Um, and again, the revenues would initially be prioritized to pay for not only our board, but the boards at WNL and Wakefield. Um, and then once everybody's got their board in place, then we would kind of move into the revenue sharing model. Um, revenue breakdown, um, mixture of static and video ads. Um, again, I've got, I didn't want to kind of burden this presentation with the various um, multitudes of, of opportunities that are there because there's a lot and there's varied uh, approaches that have been taken with different school districts. But there, there's several different types that range from large platinum kind of sponsorship models that then are, are for the entire season or for the entire year. Um, down to specific individual ads that you can actually sell. Um, and we can sell them in different capacities. These things support um, what they call themes, right? So you basically can create an entire theme around the entire scoreboard that stays up the entire uh, game or whatever, or the season or whatever. And you can do it all the way down to banner ads and specific spot ads that occur, you know, just during intermissions and timeouts and that kind of thing. So lots of different opportunities there. Um, I just wanted to do this kind of in a broad brush thing. We have 84 home games at each of the schools. Uh, typically, um, you know, and you can see the breakdown in the chart. Um, some rough math tells us that we need roughly $200 per game to um, pay for the board in about four years' time. Uh, that's probably not too big of a lift. Uh, if you think about that, 200 bucks per game in advertising revenue is something I think we should be able to achieve across uh, both the fall and the spring seasons. Um, we don't have track and cross country in this discussion yet because we didn't get a chance to loop our track and booster, our track and country, cross country booster folks in. Um, so I didn't want to speak for them, but that's kind of where we are just with what we know to be the field sports. Um, so the path forward for us is really uh, trying to get a general consensus on where we're going with this. Obviously, we want the community to kind of support that, and we want to make sure that everybody's on the same page about the fact that this is a worthwhile pursuit in terms of you know, obviously raising extra funds, being able to put this new capability in place, um, and knowing that it may protract a little bit of time um, to get that done. Um, we'll also need support from everybody. Um, I will need volunteers. Uh, we're going to need somebody to help uh, kind of champion the finance and fundraising side of this uh, to make sure that we can raise the funds we need in order to, to pay for the board, uh, assemble advertising packages that we can begin to market and, and share with some partners here in the community, uh, the business community, um, and then figure out what we would do for pricing. Uh, an APS committee, um, we have gotten support from our, again, our ADs. Uh, Dr. Clark from Yorktown is on board. Um, I haven't had a chance to, to engage with the principals at the other two schools yet, but at the end of the day, we're, our hope is that we have strong commitment um, from the schools themselves. We ultimately, though, do need to get this through APS um, as a whole. And, uh, and get buy off up and down through the APS chain. So to do that, we obviously need some folks to make sure that we're engaging with them and tackling the issues that they think are, are relevant for what we need to do um, as we talk about putting these boards in and what their concerns might be and how we're gonna address that. Uh, zoning committee, um, we will need to be able to work on how we get those boards uh, you know, zoned in. It's likely to require a waiver. There's a, um, a zoning document that's in place now in Arlington that does not permit digital media boards. That's written primarily for um, businesses that are for-profit interest businesses so that we don't have a lot of what you would see as moving or digital billboards. Um, and in fact, uh, over at Barcroft 4, uh, there is already one of these digital boards installed uh, in an APS, I mean, uh, sorry, a DPR park uh, at Barcroft 4 um, is actually, if you go over there and look at it, it's GW's um, screen. So I'm sure GW probably paid to have that put in place, but it is something that's already in place and operating at a DPR park. So I'm hoping that our request to have something similar shouldn't be met with too much resistance, but it is something we do need to make sure we resolve. Um, there we go. That's that. Okay, scrolling down. We'll capture some questions today, but if we don't, and even if we do uh, capture some today, what we like is definitely for you guys to kind of go and just tackle the survey. Um, I'll be obviously trying to send this out through our booster emails and through 
some Twitter channels. You can find this on the YHS Boosters website. Uh, I just stuck it underneath the live stream because I was running out of menu buttons, but that's where it is. The link is right there on the top. Um, at the end of the day, if you guys could go there, it's just a short little three question survey that just kind of says, you know, hey, tell us what your thoughts are. There's also a little open field in there for the comments and messages. So if you have some feedback for me, for everybody else, um, we're happy to take it. Um, and we can, uh, and, you know, adjust kind of our approach as we go. All right. And this is just a summary of what I just kind of ran through. Again, scoreboards are aging. We know we need to replace them. We can either replace them with the existing board or we can use and, and try to tackle the new digital boards. Um, the three schools are supportive of it. Um, at this stage of the game, again, we need to get that through the county. And then we need our parent community to support us being able to do that, both you know via those committees and the efforts that are gonna require to do that. That's it, short and sweet. Do we have any questions? No questions. I'm doing a fantastic job as per usual. All right. So not a huge proposal on there. Um, if there are any questions, you can ping us now. I don't know if Drew's got anything or not. Nope. Okay. And then if not, feel free to hit us up on the, um, on the website, hit the survey and check all that, that stuff off. What we're really looking for is to, to get a good feel for, is this the path that we want to pursue collectively as, as parents and boosters? Um, and what kind of level of support we can expect from the community. All good? All right. Keep it short and sweet, everybody. Put the link in the chat. Oh, and the link to the um, survey is in the chat. So if anybody wants to find that in there, they can, they can find that there as well. Uh, someone said, can you provide a relative timeline on the next steps? Yeah, so I would like to begin getting committees oriented um, as quickly as possible. And we're probably a little late to need on that, right? We've had some, some fits and starts with this. So I would like to start doing this within the next couple of weeks. Uh, are donations tax deductible? Tax donation, donations are tax deductible. In fact, YHS Boosters, the reason it exists was because we initiated this effort two years ago. Um, and in doing that, we stood up a 501c3 uh, so that any of those donations that we would be raising for the scoreboard, especially considering we might have been done doing some, some large donations, would be tax deductible, not only to individuals, but also to businesses. Okay. All right, we will look forward to any other questions, guys. Uh, feel free to hit me up again on the website um, and, and throw me what you've got and spread the word. Obviously, we want to have this recorded, so if other folks need to go see it, feel free to send them the YouTube link and they can watch this, uh, this video back. All right, thanks, everyone. Good night.